So I'm making this video because of cartoon physics. It's present in basically every animation, no matter the style or mood. And for the most part, cartoon physics makes actions smoother and more believable within the animated realm. But you wouldn't believe those exaggerated actions outside the animated realm because you know how real-world physics works. Now, I wish I could say the same for chain reactions. A lot of people don't know what the real-world counterpart looks like, and with chain reactions being very prevalent in animation, I feel like a lot of people's perception of chain reactions is probably grounded within cartoon physics. To show you just what I mean, I want to talk about the domino scene in the animated kids movie, Robots. I haven't seen this movie, but I've seen the domino scene many times because my friends won't stop sending it to me. But there are actually a lot of good examples from this scene that show just how different chain reactions look under cartoon physics. I think it's about time I made a video that compares chain reactions in cartoon physics to chain reactions in real world physics. So here we go. Let's start with the basic physics of domino lines. One of the first things I want to go over is that dominoes fall at a much faster speed than what's portrayed in the movie. If you're watching an animation, dominoes are easier to follow if they fall slowly. Maybe each domino takes multiple frames to topple. That's understandable. But to a chain reaction artist, these dominoes fall noticeably slow. Due to the standard professional domino dimensions, and the standard spacing known to all domino builders, dominoes are supposed to fall at 1 meter per second, or 61 dominoes per second. That means if you're animating at 30 frames per second, you could basically topple 2 dominoes per frame. In robots, the starting line falls at only 6 dominoes per second, which is only about 10% of the real world speed. When the line hits the floor, the speed increases to 24 dominoes per second for some reason, but that's still only about 40% of the real world speed. Going into more advanced techniques, a domino falling off a surface won't land as cleanly as it does in this clip where it bounces once and falls directly into the line in front of it. This is what a domino falling from a surface looks like in the real world, even at much lower heights than the one portrayed in the movie. It's much more chaotic. If you put just a single line underneath it, you'd need a lucky bounce or something. But here are other things builders have learned to do. Most beginners go for the triangle method, which is more forgiving. It's also kind of common to change the technique to something that falls easier. If you're a hybrid builder like me, you can draw from machines and really secure the motion transfer. These probably look very different than any animated chain reaction out there, and that's understandable. I can't imagine these would look smoother or cleaner in animation, but this is how you actually get it to work in the real world. So sure, these animation choices may be unrealistic, but I don't think they're unreasonable. In fact, real world chain reactions have proven to be just as shocking too. Look at these classic domino tricks and try to imagine them animated. If you saw these animated without ever seeing them in the real world first, would you believe this is how they could fall? I don't even think rotoscoping would make this believable. Hmm, except for the structures. My favorite domino trick gets a domino to spin on its corner and then fall into the next domino line. Imagine seeing that animated. So I don't mind that animators sometimes opt for the cleaner, smoother looking techniques in an animation, even if they'd be unrealistic. So what's the takeaway? Like, is it still important to get the two mediums of chain reaction art to look more like each other? You may have already guessed my opinion, but I don't think so. Chain reactions that are animated may be unrealistic to a chain reaction artist, but they're cleaner, smoother, and more visual. All the things that animators are good at. Likewise, chain reaction techniques in real life account for the extra chaos in real world physics that animators can simply choose to not animate. Many animated chain reactions are also deliberately used for humorous cartoonish bits, even if animation itself is a medium beyond cartoonish. We just need to recognize the distinction between animated and real life chain reaction art, and get more people acquainted with the rules of real world chain reaction physics. If you're building in the real world, would you need to make a guillotine that works exactly like this one? Or could you make it split a domino in half as cleanly as this? Most casual builders would not. But by working with your own set of materials and understanding them enough to know what actions you could reasonably make with them, you can still recreate the motion to a very realistic degree. When you're an animator, you can animate whatever motions you want, you can redesign whatever objects you need to for a theme, and your only limit is your imagination. You can totally animate chain reactions the way they work in your head, and when you're done, no one will question it. That changes once you enter real world physics. Not everything you build in the real world will just work the way you imagine it in your head. So builders have to know what works and what doesn't within the realm of their workspace, whether they're buying a material that most builders use, or building with a material that fits their personal style. I've been saying this for a long time, one of the most necessary traits of a good chain reaction artist is logic. And logic is knowing which techniques are realistic, and which ones are not, and this just takes practice and trial and error. Lots of familiarizing yourself with practical motions that you can reuse to carry out newer motions or combine with new objects, and the more you do that, the more realistic your ideas become. This applies to both dominoes and machines. For the record, chain reactions do draw from art disciplines more than any other field, since you have to make sure everything looks good on camera, is paced well, and is overall easy to follow. For example, if you want to build a circle out of dominoes, you don't just start curving a line and hope it looks okay when the curve is complete. You place dominoes at key points in the circle and then fill in the gaps. That is keyframing, which comes directly from animation. 
And so, animators and other artists out there, the world of chain reaction art appreciates your work. And a final message to all the viewers, keep spreading the word about what we're building. It would be nice to, you know, see it globally, realistically perceived someday. Thanks for watching! This actually isn't the first Chain Reaction video essay I've made recently, so you can go watch the other one, or you can watch my actual Chain Reaction project videos. And subscribe if you can, that really helps me out. Thanks!